Welcome to the Handed Down Kitchen, where we bring antique recipes out of the past and back into the kitchen. Today we're going to show you how to make a 1936 recipe for Cornish saffron cake, a fruitcake flavoured and coloured with the most precious spice of all. This heavy fruitcake has been baked in and around Cornwall for centuries, traditionally as a celebration cake for all sorts of occasions, from Christmases to weddings. We found this recipe in our copy of Cookery Illustrated and Household Management in the Local Dishes or Famous Old Fashioned Dishes chapter. You get about 10 slices of cake out of this recipe, and to make it you need the following ingredients. To make a dough you'll need 14 ounces, that's 400 grams of strong white flour, a quarter of an ounce or 7 grams of fresh yeast, a quarter of a teaspoonful of sugar, a quarter of a teaspoonful of salt, and 213 millilitres of tepid water. A quarter of a pound, that's 113 grams of mixed peel, the same weight in currants, the same weight of butter, the same weight of caster sugar, a quarter of a teaspoonful of allspice, and saffron. First, put a pinch of saffron into a small glass bowl, pour over it two tablespoonfuls of boiling water, and set it aside in a warm place until the water turns yellow. The recipe says to use a hay penny of saffron, which wouldn't have been much, just a pinch. You can leave this to infuse overnight if you like. While our saffron water is infusing, we're going to make one pound of white bread dough by using a recipe from the same book, simply called loaf bread. Have a large basin ready and sift in 400 grams of flour, a quarter of a teaspoonful of salt, and we're also going to add in the quarter of a teaspoonful of allspice now so that it gets nicely mixed into the dough. You can use strong white flour as we're doing, or plain flour for this if you prefer. Make a well in the centre of the flour. Now cream the fresh yeast with a quarter of a teaspoonful of sugar until it turns liquid. This will only take a minute. Pour the yeast into 213 millilitres of tepid or lukewarm water, which is just under a cupful, and give it a stir. Pour this into the well that you've made in the flour, and mix into it some but not all of the flour from around the edges to make a batter in the middle. Sprinkle more flour over the top to cover the batter, and then place a cloth over your basin and set it in a warm place for about 20 minutes when it should be covered with bubbles and be quite spongy. Once it's sponged through, mix in the remainder of the flour. Then knead it well. The mixture should end up being stiff enough to leave the bowl and your hands clean. Gather your dough into a ball and weigh out one pound. We got just over that, which will do. And now we're going to transform this plain bread dough into our Cornish saffron cake. So start by pouring into it your saffron water and the saffron strands and knead it in until your dough starts to change a lovely pale yellow colour. Then pour in a quarter of a pound each of caster sugar, currants and mixed citrus peel. Knead these in until you end up with a dough heavy with fruit. This does take a little time, about 10 minutes. Now melt your quarter of a pound of butter, we're using unsalted, over a low heat. 
Do this slowly, stirring gently to keep the butter from oiling. You want it to stay nice and creamy. A bit at a time, mix the butter into the dough. Once it's all in, you'll have a very sticky dough indeed. And when that's done, we're going to knead it on a worktop that's generously dusted with flour for 15 minutes until it forms a nice solid ball. You'll need lots of flour on hand as this dough drinks it up very quickly. And as we get on with this, let's tell you a bit more about Cornish saffron cake. A hundred years before this recipe was published, Richard Polwill, a famous clergyman and poet from Truro, wrote that from time immemorial, saffron currant cakes have been the boast of Cornish housewives, and that they'd been made as far back as the 16th century. Meanwhile, Penzance poet Margaret Ann Courtney explained in her book Cornish Feasts and Folklore, which was published some time later in 1890, that at Christmas time each house would bake a saffron cake and give a piece to their neighbours and local traders, be they laundresses or charwomen, so everyone could taste each other's. There's so much history and tradition to Cornish saffron cakes, this is just a snippet of what we found in our research. Transfer your dough to a well-buttered loaf tin and put it in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius, that's gas mark for 356 Fahrenheit, to bake for one hour. And this is how it looks when it's ready. The smell itself is glorious. If you ask us, every kitchen needs a slab of fruitcake hanging around ready for your elevenses, although this one is very special. The outside is golden and studded with currants and peel, and when you cut in, the sponge is full of the colour of pale sunshine, flecked here and there with a strand of saffron. You can eat it hot or cold, although what we've read is that it's really lovely while still warm. Traditionally, it's cut into thick slices and, if not eaten plain, spread over with either butter or Cornish clotted cream. And when it came to the cream, we couldn't help but add a dollop of our 1930s rhubarb and ginger jam. The sponge itself is soft and light, evenly speckled with fruits and saffron, and just so delicious. So there it is, a 1930s recipe for sunny Cornish saffron cake. Perfect for any occasion, we think. We hope you enjoyed this video, if so please leave us a like and if you'd like to see us recreate more antique recipes be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also find full instructions for this recipe and many more on our website linked in the description box below.